Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's meeting. Before we start the meeting, I'd like to read. Our city clerk, Susan Richard, puts a lot of thought to these little quotations that are up on the agenda. I always read them, but I think it's, uh, it's, it'd be nice to, to read them. And the quotation goes like this, slow down and enjoy life. It is not only the scenery you will miss by going too fast, you also miss the sense of where, you're, where you are going and why. Wonderful. I'll call the 13th regular meeting of the Common Council's order, Madam City Clerk. I'm sorry, Alderman McGrath first. I'm sorry, no, we are right. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Bauman. Here. Sorry, excuse my voice, I'm not feeling very well tonight, so you'll have to forgive me. D. Berg. Here. E. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Kittleson. Here. Manny. On excuse. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Sigali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Van Akron and Vanderbilt. 15 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the um, that we dispense with the reading of the previous minutes. Um, we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting, and the state same stand approved is entered on the record. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. Not all those in favor. State aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes stand approved. Next, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask all of them, staff, and please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, all of them, staff. And for the benefit of the gallery and the public, we call upon Alderman to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance uh, going by alphabetical order. I've been asked that question by the public. How do we decide who's going to lead us? We do it alphabetically. Mayor's appointments, uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is dated today's date. Hereby submit the following appointments to the Business Improvement District for your consideration. Reappoint Linda Jarr, Cleo Messner, Janet Carter, Jan Davis Wood and Tricia Fippen for three year terms to expire 9 12 08. And uh, appoint new member Douglas Pelnar for a three year term to expire 9 12 08. Signed by the mayor. And those will lie over. And uh, Thomas Holton to be reappointed as Director of Public Works and Engineering commencing January 1, 2006 and expiring December 31, 2010. Signed by the mayor. An appointment will lie over. And uh, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to, tourism, to the Tourism Advisory Committee. Um, the Mayor, the Director of Planning and Development, uh, Alder Person William Steffen, the Harbor Center Marina Representative Michael Fro, a lodging facility with 120 rooms or less Representative Kara Leonard, the non-lodging <laughs> tourism related business Representative Linda Jarr, Harbor Center Bid Representative Richard Meyer, Bed and Breakfast Establishment Representative Frank Ribich, Lodging with more than 120 room Representative Rick Peterson, the Museum Representative Ruth Kohler, Non-Lodging Tourism Related Business Rob Hury, and the Tourism Manager as uh, ex officio non-voting member. Um, the first, well, some of these are through uh, the end of the 2005-2006 council year and uh, about the other half are through the end of the 2006-2007 council year. Signed by the mayor. Those appointments will lie over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Madam City Clerk, public forum. Uh, yes, tonight, Jim Bourne, please. Mr. Bourne. Jim, could I get your home address, please? Uh, 1526 Knollcrest Drive. And you will have five minutes. Could you let me know when I have uh, one minute left, if sure. possible? Sure. Uh, Mayor Perez and members of the council, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, I was supposed to be here two weeks ago, but unfortunately, at the last minute, I had a conflict with my church council. And uh, so I had to be there for some quorum votes. And 
I called uh, my two aldermen, Graf and Berg, and mentioned that I was going to be able to make it. And Dan said, you should take care of God first. You can talk to us aldermen anytime. <laughs> so I'm here tonight. The reason I'm here tonight is to discuss uh, 2005 Act 40, a provision of uh, law enforcement services to cities and villages by the county sheriff. Uh, Act 40 was sponsored by Senator Lifeham, uh, amongst others, and was signed into law by Governor Doyle in the last budget. The companion bill on this was Assembly Bill 79. It had bipartisan support both in the Senate and uh, in the Senate and the Assembly, and as I said, was passed by Governor Doyle. A uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, the, the city clerk uh, put into your packets how I got started on this. Uh, this this Act 40 was not covered by the Sheboygan Press, unfortunately, so it's had been kind of under the radar screen here in Sheboygan. But I saw an article in the Journal Sentinel back on August 26th, and I sent a copy of this to my to my alderman Graf and he got it on the agenda back in September and it was referred to public protection and safety. I met with public protection and safety at their meeting on Tuesday, September 13th, and they decided to uh, have this issue lie over because of the fact that the county really hadn't met on this issue yet. Uh, the last county board meeting last week, it was referred to the law committee and I talked to uh, Supervisor Winkle before I left tonight and he said they have met and they haven't taken any action on, on, this, on this bill, but actually they really can't take any action on it because it's a statute and it would be up to the city of Sheboygan whether they want to, whether they want to pursue this. The reason this bill came about was that current law was unclear regarding the authority of cities and villages to possibly abolish their police departments and contract with the county for law enforcement services. Act 40 authorizes cities and villages to abolish their police department if they enter into a contract with the county for the sheriff to provide law enforcement services for any city or village in Wisconsin. The reason this, in, this article was of interest to me is because in speaking with my, with my own alderman and several others and also uh, running into Mayor Perez occasionally at lunch, I, I, I realized the predicament the council is in with trying to balance this budget. It's my understanding that uh, for 2005, the city budget for police services is $10.4 million, which is almost a third of the city budget. Next year, according to the article in the Sheboygan Press, it's going to be $10.7 million. Uh, I don't have to remind you of the fact that your shared revenue is frozen. There's a property tax limits. It's not really a freeze in my opinion, but there are limits on what you can do with the budget the next two years. And also looming in the upcoming uh, legislative session in Madison is the Taxpayer Bill of Rights is going to be re revived again. Now regardless how you personally feel about the tax bill bill or Taxpayer Bill of Rights, it's going to be revived and this is probably going to be a constitutional amendment that has to be passed by two sessions of the legislature and then has to go to referendum. And there was a survey done by the Republican and Democratic Caucus last session, and if this taxpayer bill of rights would have went to a vote last session, 70% of the taxpayers in Wisconsin have would have voted for this. So when I was, when I was speaking with the uh, Public Protection and Safety Committee, what I was recommending because of the, the fiscal restraints that the city is in, and I'm not endorsing Act 40 by any means, only if it would make financial sense to the, to the city of Sheboygan. In other words, if you approached the sheriff and laid out what you wanted as law enforcement in the city of Sheboygan, and let's say hypothetically, and I don't like to deal in, in hypothetical situations, but let's just say the sheriff said could, could provide the law enforcement that you want for $8.4 million. That's a $2 million savings over what you're doing right now. So what I recommended to public protection and safety is to possibly form a committee, Mayor Perez, similar to the committee that you formed when you were on the school board, and I would recommend that the committee be made up of labor leaders, business people. Excuse me, Mr. Boren, your time is up. Alderman Susha. I make a motion to allow him to finish. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
One no. Please continue, Mr. Bourne. What I, what I was going to recommend to the Public Protection and Safety Committee is, is for, if the committee agreed, would be for the mayor to appoint a, a study committee made up of, as I said, labor leaders, business leaders, citizens, um, and whoever else you thought, Mayor Perez, would be appropriate for that committee and to study this issue. And, if there were, if, and after this study by your committee, if there were going to be true savings, now, obviously, at the end of this study, if the city was going to save fifty or one hundred thousand dollars, in the scheme of things, it wouldn't be practical to uh, to change over to the sheriff's department providing to provide law enforcement services. On the other hand, if it was going to be a couple million dollars, I think it's something that you that you seriously have to take a look at. So I'm going to be watching for a future public protection and safety meeting, and I'll, we'll go back and discuss this further. But I wanted to uh, at least talk to the council about my feelings on this bill tonight. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. And that's it. Thank you, uh, Madam City Clerk. Next, we have a proclamation for Safe Harbor 15th anniversary, and I'd ask Mary Fontanessa to please come forward. Here. Thank you for being here today, tonight. As we know, Safe Harbor is celebrating its 15th anniversary, and along those lines, we have issued a proclamation. Whereas the effects of domestic abuse and sexual assault are far reaching, and these crimes take a toll on individuals, families, our community, and our society. And whereas Safe Harbor is dedicated to the prevention of all forms of domestic abuse and sexual abuse assault in the community, and whereas each year Safe Harbor services hundreds of citizens by offering education and prevention programs, advocacy, and by providing safety and support services for victims of domestic violence, and whereas in September 1990, Safe Harbor began working to ensure that those who live, whose lives are shattered by domestic violence can, can find help and hope in Sheboygan. Now, therefore, I, Juan Perez, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby extend to Safe Harbor the heartfelt congratulations of all the citizens of Sheboygan on the occasion of their 50th anniversary and encourage all my fellow citizens to support this fine organization which continues to provide shelter and support for the victims of domestic violence in our community. Ms. Fontanessa, congratulations for your, on your anniversary. Thank you very much. Ms. Fontanessa, I would like to say a few words. I want to thank all of you very, very much and just let you know that I firmly believe that I would not be standing here on behalf of the Board of Safe Harbor and the people that we serve if it were not for the wonderful people of Sheboygan. Twelve years ago, you helped us to, to find a new facility to, sh to shelter the victims of domestic violence and sexual assault that we serve each year. In 1991, when we had only a few months operating expenses. It was the people of Sheboygan that kept us open and running. It was the people of Sheboygan that have been there since the very beginning, and I'm so glad that you're still with us today. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda, we have a hearing to amend the text of the City of Sheboygan official zoning ordinance relating to quorum requirements for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is there any person that wishes to be heard? Is there any person that wishes to be heard? Is there any person that wishes to be heard? Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move that the hearing be closed. There's a motion. Is there a sec second? second? Under discussion? Not. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Consent agenda. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to pull forward uh, two documents. The first one is 1374. Pulling forward 1334 on page 1374. 1374 on page 10, I believe. <clears throat> This is the resolution approving the terms and conditions for 
the contract for lease of land between the Redevelopment Authority and Harborside Development and um, Entertainment LLC. And with that, I'll turn it over to Alderman Stephan. Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I need to move that the rules be suspended. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Under discussion? All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Please continue. I would move that the resolutions be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put 1374 upon its passage under discussion. Uh, under discussion, I'm going to turn it over to Paulette. Um, she's got the developers here and they're going to give you a, a quick overview. Uh, as far as the lease goes, uh, Steve can answer any questions. Um, I know some people just got it tonight, but typically these leases, the rates are all the same with everything we're doing in the South Pier. It's just that they've got to put in the, the boundaries and the numbers and the measurements and stuff. But all the you know, language is similar to what we've been doing in the South Pier. So with that, I'll turn it over to Paulette. Okay, excuse me, uh, Paulette. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just going to ask the same thing. Someone could please explain this. Thank you. Ms. Anders. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor and Common Council. What I'll do is um, actually turn it over to the developer <laughs> and their architect. Um, they're okay, present. We, we need a motion to open the floor to non to the There's a motion and a second to open the floor to non-department head under discussion. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please proceed. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Scott Matula. I'm with LJM Architects. I'm uh, representing Harborside Development. Uh, Could you speak a little closer? Is it, okay, is, is that, that better? Sorry, is it Scott Matula? Yes, M-A-T-U-L-A. We Hi. have here uh, some drawings of what we're proposing to do. I'm just gonna touch very briefly on it. I'll let, I'll let John uh, <coughs> fill in a few more of the details. Uh, basically, what we're proposing right now are two buildings. Um, the first one is, um, I don't know, maybe about a couple hundred feet north of where the Jomaji building is. Uh, the second one would be located across from the entrance of the Blue Harbor parking lot. You want to show the second Sure. The first building, one of the harbor side terminals mm -hmm. east. Hi, everybody. You know, uh, I'm honored to be here. My name is John Schwartz, Harbor Side Development Entertainment. And uh, as Scott was saying, the first building will be right here, Harbor Terminal East, we're calling it. And another Mr. Swartz, could, could you try to talk into the mic? We got the public is watching and they'd like. Okay, sure. sure. Thank you. And another building we are seeking to, to start digging will be right over here. Um, and what they will have is retail in the bottom and some condos up top, which we have drawings. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff for one second before I start talking about these things, just to go over some things with the agreement. Okay. Uh, I know we've got a Packer game to get to, so we're going to try and do this really fast. Would you please give us your full name first so we can keep it on the record? Jeff Bartson. Uh, John and I are partners in Harborside Development and Entertainment. Um, real briefly, it's, it's a privilege to be here. We thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, we're excited about this uh, process. We're excited about our projects. Uh, we've had a really good working relationship with the staff. Uh, Paulette and Mr. McLean have been very great to work with, but uh, we've got six buildings to older. Uh, total, uh, we are trying to go ahead with two of them now. We've, we've come to terms with the city on the development agreement and the lease agreement, so we're ready to move forward. Uh, we we want to start digging as soon as possible. We have high hopes for this area. We think this and other buildings will start and be the catalyst for uh, a lot of development on the South Pier and the surrounding area. So uh, we can go the specifics of the approval or of the uh, the drawings, we can talk through the project. If you have questions of us, our structure, our legal structure. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Sheboygan original, so I live in Madison now. John's from um, the Chicago area. Uh, together, we own a lot of condos at, in the Dells and at here, here at Blue Harbor, a, a little over 20 units. And so we have a vested interest in this area. We're not going anywhere, and we're looking forward to making it better. So John, if you want to mm -hmm. keep sure. Sure. Um, that is correct. I own uh, a bunch of units at Blue Harbor. I own 20 of them. And uh, 
I'm so fond of the investment at Blue Harbor and some of the other investments we've done in Illinois and the Dells. Um, I'm very excited to take the next step and, and to put more money into this area. Um, I'm enamored by the whole area and we have some ideas that have worked in other developments, whether it's the Dells or in the Illinois region, that we think they'll work really well over here. The biggest chaos that we see over here is not only is Blue Harbor is such a, a wonderful resort, but we have Lake Michigan right there. And we have a beautiful South Pier that when we start building some of these things I'm going to talk about, um, there's going to be a vibrancy and uh, this place I am just very excited about. Um, to start out, when we first started with working with the RDA in February, we were talking about building a couple buildings that had condos on the top and retail on the bottom. Um, we've also seen this year, 2005, that Blue Harbor and South Pier, not much has been going on. We've received a lot of comments of it being a boring island. I, uh, every time I come up here weekly, I don't see many of the locals coming down on the South Pier, and it's well understood. But one thing that everybody says is it's a beautiful place and we cannot wait the development happens. People, we, have, we received our August checks and people are spending 600 bucks a night to come to our places and our checks have been phenomenal. And uh, Blue Harbor, um, once this happens, this is, uh, this is gonna be one of the, the greatest tourist spots in the Midwest. And I feel, feel very strongly about that and strongly enough, to put my money over here versus other spots that we can in the Midwest. Um, our goal this year with our company has just been right on Sheboygan. Now, what has happened since we were gonna put these buildings in retail is we were able to uh, take a look at this harbor terminal. We wanna react to the, uh, the people staying in our units and some of the feedback I've been getting from Joseph Haas. And what they need next year to see on that South Pier is um, amenities for the children. What I've learned through the, from the Dells and all our other investments, unless your child comes pulling at you, sorry Scott, and tugging, let's go back to Blue Harbor, they have about 10, 12 different destinations to go to. So next year we want to develop attractions for the children and, uh, and the adults as well. But um, over to the right, this harbor terminal area, I'm sorry, um, what we want to capture next year, not only one of the things we want to bring to Sheboygan is a water taxi, which will pick up people at the harbor terminal. Maybe we'll go this way with a little bit more. And be able to transport people up and down the river for the west and the east banks to tie in. We want to get people over to the west side. I think right now that's the biggest thing is people will come over to Blue Harbor and uh, they find it difficult to get across. And this water taxi will be an, um, an attraction for the children, not just a taxi, and parents to get people around and I kind of bring both sides together. Um, we also, out of here next year, we want to use this space over here to try and provide entertainment all year long, whether it's the children of the schools coming and doing a little puppet show or it's bands over there. But we want something going on at all times and we're gonna develop that over there. We are also going to, to the right, put up an outfitter store which will um, not only have bicycle rentals, segways, kayaks, maybe even jet skis we'll explore, but uh, it'll also have opportunities for children to purchase uh, um, summer needs. They can have Velcro, baseballs, all kinds of things. Plus we're gonna rent out fishing poles so kids are fishing all out there. Um, it's gonna be a place where there can be charters coming through, bicycle tours up and down um, the coast. So we really um, find this place to be um, an area where we're going to build up South Pier and activities and stuff. And uh, the, the people that are coming here, they need this. Um, they're leaving with money in their pockets, <laughs> is what they're telling us, and uh, the, the kids are a little bored. So um, these are the things that will work in other areas and make it grow. Also, we also want to get something for next year um, there's a big mile circuit around South Pier, so we want to be able to provide an attraction, whether it's a little trolley or a choo-choo, and have the kids going around. Some of these amenities we want to bring over here, I would, uh, I'm also wanting to incorporate so we get all the locals to visit South Pier and Lake Michigan. Right now we're fortunate that there's a lot of people out, uh, outside of Sheboygan that uh, want to spend a lot of money in, uh, in, in this area and help out, but uh, 
And it'll never work unless we get the locals out here and, and provide stuff for the locals. So we're going to keep both of these things in mind. And with that great mix, this is going to develop into a destination that'll be a three-day destination and not just a half-day destination. Um, a great thing that we see about this area is Door County is still a couple hours away. Um, you put everything right over here, we're saving everybody four hours a weekend coming up to here. And uh, it's a very exciting exciting place. I mean, I could go on for an hour, but I'd rather just have people ask whatever questions they have of this, because you've heard a lot of things, and uh, I'd love to answer them, the questions. And if anybody's, uh, you know, I read an editorial last week about Blue Harbor, and sometimes I'm, I'm hearing about Blue Harbor. Um, you know, I feel very confident in Blue Harbor. If I didn't, I wouldn't be double downing on my investment. There's other places I can put my money. But uh, I know based upon the checks that I've gotten the last two months, um, Blue Harbor is going to be a big winner for my partners and for the city. And um, I've seen stuff like this where you go through a one-year cycle of it being boring. And as it gets um, established and infrastructure is put in there, this thing's going to go so fast, it'll be blinding speed. And uh, it's going to be very exciting to be part of, and I want everybody to be involved in this. Uh, we are. I am from Illinois. Um, Jeff is here from Sheboygan. But with all the people we've talked to in the last four months, uh, we want to get all the locals involved with this. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I'd love to answer. Are there any questions? Oh, Masusha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I've received some unusual feedback over the past few months, and I've never known what to do with it. And actually, your presentation here tonight gives me a place to put this uh, suggestion and some feedback from some of the phone calls. And I know I mentioned this to Scott before. I've gotten calls about the colors of the buildings that are going up on South Pier. And I would just ask that as you do the development, you keep in mind we've got a beautiful hotel there that's white with a red roof. Here I see a picture of a bright orange building. Bright orange clashes with red roofs. So if you could just keep that in mind as you're putting the paints together and the, and the buildings together down there. Um, it looks like this facility here um, is going to be absolutely beautiful. And I am thrilled to hear you're looking at a water taxi versus a bridge. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And uh, the lime green car down here in the corner, we're going to keep that out there too. <laughs> so, but I, I agree with you. These colors are not set in stone. What we've done over the last months is whether it's the mayor, the alderman, or RDA, whatever changes, luckily we can change anything you want. We've had so many comments from the RDA and other people what to do as far as changes, and uh, we love them. This That's is very good. Yeah. Alderman Stefan. Um, just a couple of points of information. He mentioned a six, six unit project, and and that's the long-term goal. And all we're approving tonight is two, because I mean, you can't take the whole ball of wax at one time, just to clear that up in case anybody had an idea. And as far as the buildings and the colors, you know, the redevelopment, just to, we approve the pictures and say it looks nice. The next step is it goes to architectural review, where we actually have people who build homes for a living and you know, design homes for a living. So they're the ones who approve all the architecture and along with the developers. So it's kind of out of our hands. But hypothetically, they should be the ones that you know, are the experts. Thank you, Alan Stefan. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, are you going to have any type of sports for the kids in the winter? We're talking summer only, the fishing, etc., the kayaks. Are you going to have anything for them in the winter? Because we do have some rotten winters here. Mm -hmm. And also, are you going to make it affordable for the children and their families, for the people in this area, to be able to go to that? Because that would be one of the prime things that would bring the people to your area would be the cost features. Sure. To answer uh, both questions, as far as the winter, the winter is the most critical. In the summer, like in the Dells and other destinations, you'll get um, things sell out and there's waiting lists for summer. So summers is not going to be something that we're going to have to market uh, an extreme a lot. People come in the summer and when kids are out of school. But the winter is the most critical part to any investment, whether it's owning the condos or to South Pier itself. So a lot of the things that we're going to be doing over here based upon the weather is going to be indoor dry land type stuff since we have an indoor um, um, wet area with the water park. What I think is the next thing that's going to happen around the United States besides these outdoor, I mean uh, indoor water parks is uh, indoor amusements. Um, so we are right now trying to build some things for next year because we don't want to lose next year. And I was hoping that there's more things that were going to be uh, put on this pier this year for, for everybody. But um, instead of building more condos and, 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 and retail, we want to get into that area of, like you say, summer um, outdoor activities with the fall in mind of all winter activities. Um, 
And uh, I don't know, for another day I can talk about that. We have some ideas for um, indoor stuff in winter. We definitely have it in mind, but uh, right now these first two developments are not going to have a lot of it at, at first. There's going to be some things for the kids to do. There's going to be a little play area in, in one of the structures. There's going to be a little uh, putt-putt golf area, but triple play is taking care of some of that need, which we're happy about. They've got some of the older kids. We're going to we're going to come back in some of our other buildings and address some of the smaller kids' needs too. But it, it's critical for us that we do that. And as far as affordability, just to answer your next question, yeah, we're going to do everything in our power that during the week, when it's slower times over there, we're going to make it very affordable to um, the children and, and adults of the, of the area, um, whether it's water, taxi, having residence rates and everything for everybody, because that, that's critical. That's how the word gets spread around here, is everybody from the area knows people from outside the area. <laughs> area so we want that to happen. Yeah. Oliver Neberg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Question on your condo development, will those be rental condos uh, or will those be basically long-term lease or will they be for sale and what will the price points be on them? Mm -hmm. Sure, good question. Um, it's hard to answer that one because I don't know exactly right now. I can foresee them being um, rentals to purchase, I mean condominiums to purchase. I can see them being weekly rentals, monthly ones. Um, I know one thing that if a unit is getting six, seven hundred bucks a night, the value of that unit will be very great compared to the uh, apartment rental rate, which in turn will uh, drive up a higher tax base for everybody. So we will work with the, uh, the city to establish what's best for all of us, but uh, that can make a difference of uh, probably about 500,000 each condo possibly. That's just some of my things. And if you have eight to 16 condos in there, that's a lot of tax base for the, the city to grab onto. Yeah. Okay, well. If there's no more questions, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate no it very much. Oh, thank you very much. And I want to thank the mayor and the RDA for uh, such an enjoyable time of going through this. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just, just with respect to the documents in front of you, um, you've got really an incomplete set right now. Uh, when uh, we last presented to the RDA, which was last Thursday, uh, what we were discussing at the RDA wa originally was uh, just approval of the Harbor Terminal, what we're calling the Harbor Terminal East Building. Uh, at, at that meeting, the RDA approved both the uh, Harbor Terminal East Building and the one uh, shanty-style building that's farther down, uh, down the pier. Uh, so over the weekend, I amended the or revised the contract for lease of for private redevelopment that you do have as an exhibit to include both of the projects. But uh, there's only one ground lease attached, and that's the one for the Harbor Terminal East. There will be another ground lease for the uh, the shanty style building. It'll basically be identical to uh, the the lease that you do have in front of you. Uh, except for the differences in the fact that it's a shanty style building and where it's located and its legal description and the square footage of the, the property and the uses. The uses for the shanty style buildings are basically uh, uh, retail on the first floor and condominiums on the second floor. Uh, but other than that, you, you've got the full packet. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that. I apologize for not getting the documents uh, to the clerk in time for you to uh, get with your packets this weekend. I'm sure you would have all enjoyed reading this, these uh, documents thoroughly over the weekend. Uh, it has been stated that they are similar to prior agreements that we've entered into on the South Pier. I will say they're not identical. Each, uh, each one's got its little nuances. Uh, uh, they're, items in here that aren't in other ones. Uh, some things are similar to other ones. Uh, you know, and it's, as far as the documents themselves, it's a little much for the council to uh, bite off here tonight as far as the specific, specifics of the agreement. Uh, I, I will say that we've gone over these things pretty carefully with the Redevelopment Authority and uh, I think they're comfortable with the, the concepts here. Uh, the Redevelopment Authority basically, you know, 
owns the land out there and enters into the lease, the statute does require that the council approve the terms and conditions of uh, redevelopment agreements and contracts uh, for lease and ground leases uh, in redevelopment areas. So uh, you've got approval of, of their uh, process. Uh, if, if you have any questions about specifics in the document, uh, I'd be happy to try to address them. There, one thing that is a little different on this project, I talked to uh, Attorney Bartson uh, this morning about is uh, the ownership structure and perhaps uh, Attorney Bartson can address that. The, these documents uh, speak in terms of Harborside Development and Entertainment LLC, uh, but I've been advised that they intend to That'll be sort of the, uh, the development arm. What they're looking at doing is having each of the particular individual projects, each of the individual buildings, uh, really owned by a different LLC, limited liability company, that would have different uh, investors that would, are more passive investors uh, as members of those LLCs and Harborside Development and Entertainment would be kind of the managing member of those LLCs. Uh, it's the other projects out there, we haven't done that at this, at this point. Uh, they've been uh, you know, owned by the entity we've, we're uh, contracting with. Um, that, that gets into the issue of assignability. There's some assignment provisions in here um, that generally relate to once the buildings are complete, they've got the right to assign to anybody they want without any con consent on the city or the redevelopment authority's part. But uh, I think it's important that you be aware that there will be different entities owning each building. And perhaps, uh, Attorney Bartson, if you could address that a little bit more for the council. Sure. When, we, when we began, uh, when John and I began looking at this a year ago, we uh, we started looking at a building or two, and uh, we set up a company to start doing that. As it unfolded, uh, we saw more and more possibilities, and so what happened is our pool of investors needed to spread out a little bit more. And we began to, you know, internally for legal reasons, just look at more complexities in setting up all these entities, both from a security standpoint and, you know, from conflicts of interest standpoint. So what, what we thought was the best model was that the city from our standpoint, wanted to make sure that they knew who they were dealing with, that they weren't going to sign an agreement with Joe one day and, and be working with Susie the next day. So we think we can accomplish that and accommodate our investors at the same time by having Harvard Side Development Entertainment, owned by John and I, always be an owner of each of these units and always be the managing member. So you're, all, you're only going to be talking to one, one group of people, and that's John and I. That gives us flexibility in funding each one of these buildings with a slightly different pool of investors. Otherwise, we're looking for a large group of investors to do all six, and that really becomes problematic. So that's why we did it that way. Thank you. Anything else? No. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, and Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Consent agenda, Alderman Graf. No, my second one, pull forward. Your like honor, pull another one forward, sir? Um, under matters laid over, uh, 1258. which is on page nine, I believe. And that's the ordinance, um, which is amending section 2975 of 1975, uh, Sheboygan Municipal Code, so has to add various positions to the city development table of organization. And um, with that being moved forward, I would make a motion that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion a second to put 1258 upon its passage under discussion. There being on, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. 
Eberg. Aye. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. No. And Deberg. No. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. Consent agenda, Holman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. With that, um, for items 13.1 through 13.25, I would move that all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass all, I believe there's three resolutions. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bowman. I thank you, Your Honor. On uh, 13.4, just for discussion purposes only, I don't want to call it out separately. Okay, 13.4 for discussion. This will be, uh, I'll read it out by the way too, it was a, uh, from the Plan Commission, uh, it was a communication from Louise Hansen uh, stating that she was outraged that the city did grant a conditional use permit to a local pet store. Uh, this was for the sale of a maximum of 40 puppies. I did attend that meeting and uh, did listen to uh, Mrs. Hansen's presentation along with uh, representatives from Humane Society, ASPCA and some other areas. There was also a veterinarian there. And I found out basically that Land Commission does not need to bring this particular thing to council because it is a conditional use permit. Honestly, I didn't know that and I had been waiting for it to come through so we could send it back basically. Well, it didn't happen. And like I say, listening to the presentation, it resulted in uh, a 600 signature petition that was presented to myself. And she had asked me to take this to the pet supply outlet store in the Washington Square Market area from the petitioners who will no longer shop at this particular store because of the fact of the puppies that they intend to sell. Um, and of course, parts of their presentation was the fact that pets should only be purchased from reputable breeders by the public, not from unscrupulous mill type dealers who will never let their animals out for exercise other than for breeding purposes. I'm sorry we couldn't do much more to prevent this, but it's a permit that did go through. The only way now to stop it would be go through a court. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> These puppies that were being sold out there are from legitimate people, you know, in the business. A lot of them uh, breed for a show, and uh, a lot of these people that are objecting to this, they figure if your dog, if you, if you're raising a dog and your dog has more than one litter, you're considered running a puppy mill. But that ain't right. But these dogs are good, legitimate dogs. Thank you, Alan Berg. Any other comments? If not, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. 13-1, Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. And Eberg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1326 to 1330 to be referred except 1329. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. On 1329, I would move to file that particular communication. There's a motion and a second to file under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, Mr. Abel did appear at the Parks and Forestry Commission meeting and he appeared in the public comment section of the meeting and actually did state everything that it says on the back of this particular communication, that he was not happy with the location with the, uh, uh, the Leo Mung American Veterans Memorial within the Deland Park area. And once this was basically explained, um, that it also had been sent through council already, that. Uh, there was nothing really that could be done to move it. So I then, like I said before, moved to file. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of Officers 2, 1330A by City Plan Commission recommending filing document approving the Capital Improvements Program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission. 
<coughs> I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being on, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1331, Alderman, by, excuse me, 1331 by the City Plan Commission recommended approval of the revised capital improvements program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period 206-210 and adopting the 206 program for implementation. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Uh, we need to refer this to finance. This is the one that goes to finance. This is the one that goes to finance. It's going to have to go to finance. This, is, uh, this, this just came back from the City Planning Commission by ordinance. It has to be referred to City uh, finance, so if okay. you would just withdraw and then make a motion to refer to finance, please. Yes, please. Let's, I make a motion to refer to finance. And I'll There's a motion second. and withdraw a second. Is there a second to refer to finance? Second. second. Under discussion? Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I just a question for the city clerk. When will we be having this document so we can see and compare the revisions? When 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 do you meet Alderman Groff? When does we meet next Monday. Next Monday. After that, uh, it'll be here the following the following council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Groff. Alderman Deberg. <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, we're going to have a joint meeting with you, aren't we? Salaries and grievance, and you October October 10th at six o'clock. Right. That's I, how we're planning it. Go, go ahead, sir. Paul McGraw. Thank you. Yep, we're planning a joint meeting with um, salary and grievance and, and finance also. Uh, but we'll also be discussing this at that, that same meeting. And just to let you know the, the difference, um, what happened is that there was, I believe it's $96,000 for um, police um, video cameras in, uh, in the cars. And that's the, the change that was made um, to the capital improvements. And we sent that directly over to uh, the plan department so they could approve that and they did. Right, the Capital Improvements Commission made its recommendations, came to council, was referred to capital to city planning. City planning held it pending their, the reconvening of the Capital Improvements Convi Commission to add that $96,000 for the surveillance cameras. That has been done. Now it needs to go by ordinance back to finance, then it'll come back to the council. After all that, are we clear? <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little confusing. Alderman Staffan. Um, I just wanted to make sure. I have under other matters, was at that point in time, it was document 1268, and that has the uh, police video of $93,840 in. So that, that would be the final document then if it's got it in there, any capital improvements? 12, 12 what, sir? It, it's not a document that's on the agenda for tonight, but I just have it with me because I knew we were going to talk about this. But. That has a police video system for 93,840 on it, so that would be the final yes. one, right? Okay. Yes. Thank you, all staff. Are we done? Thank you. Paula Masagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And that revised capital improvement plan, does that still hold as request for the hold off of the police station until 2008? Correct. That's still in that. Okay. As it stands now, the recommendation of the commission by a majority vote makes that recommendation to postpone the building of the police station for two years. Okay, there's a Alderman Graf. Just to he's Alderman uh, Sigali's uh, mind a little bit. We, we can vote on that. Um, we, we vote on that when it comes out of finance. And then we make recommendations. Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you, Alderman. There's a motion and a second to refer back to finance. Do you need a roll call for that? All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. To be referred 1332 to 1352, but please note that 1338 will go to public protection and safety, and 1345 will go to public protection and safety also. Two changes. Resolutions introduce three. 
1353 by Alderman Stefan approving the amendment to contract for sale of land for private development and the promissory notes by and between River Park Palace Place of Sheboygan LLC and the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I believe once again I need suspension of the rules. Is there any objection? Please proceed. I would then move the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Put the resolution 1353 upon its passage under discussion. Uh, Attorney McLean mentioned that um, typically the redevelopment authority, when they are in charge of lands, they might, they had a lease. There were some issues that need to be discussed and they were approved and all of a sudden we found out that even though the redevelopment authority approved them, they had to come back to the council to get approved and that's the reason why it's here tonight and why we needed suspension. Um, if you have any more questions, Paulette, I'm sure would be happy to fill you in. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Are there any more questions by the council? If not, please call the roll. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1354 is listed as lies over, but it will be referred to finance. Uh, Alderman Serta. Well. Could yeah. I also have that document um, referred to salary and grievance too? Referred to salary and grievance also? Also correct. Is this, excuse me, is this 1354? 1354. Finance mm -hmm. and salary. Salary and grievance and finance. Any mm -hmm. objection to that? Is there a second to that? Second. 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 Under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I simply wanted to Alderman refer Montemayor, it back to Alderman Montemayor, please finance. rise. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I simply wanted to refer it back to finance so we can look at the, the funding of this again. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you. Montemayor. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1355 to 1357 to be referred. Report of Committee 5, 1358 by salary and grievances recommending filing various documents. Alderman E. Berg. Yes, so thank you, Your Honor. I recommend uh, that the uh, documents be filed. Uh, second. Uh, under discussion. Under discussion. Now, under discussion, these are uh, issues that were brought forward by former alderman uh, Dr. Carl Tafel regarding firm limits. Uh, I think the committee has reviewed them, has discussed them, and we are recommended filing. Uh, it is pulled from consent because Dr. Tafel requested that we would have a roll call vote, and I would request same. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, please call the roll. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. And Davis. Aye. <clears throat> 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Reported Committee 5, 1359 and 1360 to be referred. <coughs> Report of Committee 7, 1361 by Finance, recommending filing documents authorizing the establishment of a policy to review the hiring of city employees effective immediately and during 206 and eliminating the creation of new city positions. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move that the um, RC be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion and a second under Excuse discussion. Me. Who seconded it? Thank you. Alderman Montemayor, second. Motion to accept and adopt committee report. Under, Under discussion. discussion. Uh, Your Honor, um, this is one of the, um, this item is what uh, finance and salary and grievances will be discussing because uh, there are certain things that we'd like to do and we'd like to see changed in our, our hiring policy and um, this would be something that we need to talk about. Okay, thank you, Alderman Graf. Any further discussion? Does anybody want a roll call on this? If not, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1362 by law and licensing recommending filing document authorizing the city of Sheboygan to apply for copyright and trademark of its logo and tagline. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and placed on file. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt the report of committee and under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, we uh, were advised through uh, uh, our council in committee that 
being it that the city's already paid for the logo and things like that, as long as it's being used in the proper manner and it's not being used in a derogatory way, we've been, we're pretty well protected now without having to go through the whole steps. If we have an issue in the future, we can have our legal counsel, city attorney, or whatever take care of it at that time. So there's really no reason to pursue this any further. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Under discussion, uh, Mr. City Attorney, I would, I would request that uh, Assistant City Attorney uh, Chuck Adams submit a legal memoranda on that issue to me. City Attorney. Uh, well, uh, our office uh, will submit something if you... Yes, request. please. Sure. Thank you, sir. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? I don't know who the no's were. Who the no's? Do we want to do a roll call? Two no's. Montemayor and uh, Meyer. Thank you. Motion carries. 1363 by the Committee of the Whole recommended filing documents to repeal Division 3 of Article 4, Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code relating to a municipal court. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Even though I'm going to make the motion to accept and file the RC and a motion to accept and file the general ordinance, I will be voting against it. I still think that having a municipal court is going to grow legs and cost us in the long run instead of save us. Sorry, what? You need a motion before we discuss. Right. Did you make a motion? Yes. She did. And there was a second? Second. Okay. Please continue. Are you done? That's it. Thank you. Any more discussion? Alder Macerda. Thank you, Your Honor. At the last committee of the whole, um, Elder person Montemayor had challenged the elder persons who had supported the municipal court to show us the money per se. Um, fortunately, I, I did contact Rich Gephardt and I got to thank him for putting together a comprehensive report which you've all found on your desk. Um, for those of you, um, the viewers at home, I'll explain here some of the tallies that he came up with, um, respectively looking at these number, numbers conservatively. Um, the startup cost for the municipal court, if we would start in November by training a, a clerk for the two months and start our municipal court come January, we're looking at the total startup cost being for the total $130,000 or 130105 um, We would be generating a total revenue in that for ourselves, 470652 now, if we pay back the, the expenses, also the $50,000, which has been advanced to us from the general fund, we'll be contributing $290,547 to our general fund. But we also have to incorporate the funds that we would be receiving back from the county um, from the previous year. And with those combined totals, we're looking at generating $384,547 when the projected 2006 general fund revenue cost that we were projecting from the county with doing it for free basically we were looking at 450,000 so just the difference in the first year getting started that's a difference of $65,000 approximately to be exact I think it's $65,453 that's all that's holding us back to improving the quality of life issues um, given D district 6 and maybe Alderman Racky can can also verify this, 75% of my calls has to do with housing related issues. And by having a municipal court, we are gonna address these issues a lot more effectively. So that's what it comes down to in terms of money. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you, Alderman Serta, for that information. I think most of the aldermen, all the aldermen understand the startup costs. That's not, to me, the real problem. It's down the line. Salaries grow, more employees will be needed, more benefits will be needed, although in the very first year it's not accounted for because there will be no benefits and it will be part-time. But if this is successful, as proposed, this will grow. We'll add some income because there will be more tickets written, but I can't imagine that they will meet and exceed the cost of the salaries, the benefits, the equipment, and we already have the service. This is a duplication of service. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Yana. Um, I can agree with what Alderman Segali, or excuse me, Alderman Serta <laughs> just, just explained here, but it still is a $65,000 loss in a, in a year that we really can't afford. 
any losses. Um, $65,000 is, is quite a bit when you're, you're looking at, at, at things. And then also, we have to be able to collect on all of these. And I know right now, you're looking at the county's collection, they don't collect all the monies that they have coming from their circuit courts either. And uh, that's, that's a loss. And I don't know if that was taken in consideration for any of these figures or not. Um, but who, who will be doing the collection? If it's the clerk that's in the office, uh, sooner or later they're going to run out of time, they're going to have to add somebody new. So I, I can see costs escalating also. And I still think of this as a, um, as a shared services that we could do um, with. And as you pointed out here, we get 450, or it's estimated in our revenue, if we let the, um, if we let the, the uh, county do it, our revenue is $450,000. And that's bound to go up also. The other, the other thing I see that was brought up uh, a week ago was that there is legislation being looked at that uh, the state will be starting to charge municipal courts what they charge the circuit court for handling their fees. And that's, um, that's something that uh, is out there too. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Just as a point of clarification, because it's been brought up, if you look at page three here, where it talks about the estimated cost for the circuit court and municipal court revenues, you're looking at that gap to the right-hand side of the third column, the vertical column, where that is, is making some huge assumptions. And I'm talking about, as Alderman Groff has stated, the assumption being that we will be able to collect 100% of that money. It may turn out that the city's gonna end up being a collection agency that's not gonna have a very good return on that. And we're also looking at a time factor. Now there's two options for collecting, is co serving as a collecting agency or hiring one ourselves and paying a percentage of that, which means we're not gonna get all that money. We're gonna get a percentage of that. The other option is they don't pay, they go to jail. Well, it costs us, I believe, 40 to $45 a day to keep somebody in jail. So that's gonna to have to be chiseled off that amount too. The amounts are, are, are may be attractive to some. They're not attractive to me, and I'll tell you why. Because we're, we have the, the capability, the ability to raise our levy limit by 3.339% this year, and we are already in the hole. Next year, we're gonna be able to raise it no more than 2%. That's a lot less than we're able to do now, and we're trying to take a $65,000 hit, $65, hit. I wouldn't recommend that. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. Talk about $65,000 hit when you're trying to protect the taxpayers and their uh, homes and their property, but everybody's willing to put out $107,000 for room tax committee. I don't think that makes any sense. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Attorney McLean, if the council approves this today, when is the soonest that the municipal court will start? Because last I heard, we're waiting for the uh, software. Attorney McLean. That's correct, Alderman Vanderwill. Uh, the Paragon software is developing the software. Uh, I think the earliest that's probably going to be available is at the end of October. Uh, so it would be sometime after that. We'd have to hire a clerk, uh, start, I guess what I would suggest that probably the cleanest thing would be to set, because this is dragged on, set a January 1 date to, and start converting over writing tickets uh, based on the municipal court uh, come January 1. Um, that gives us a little time to hire a clerk, uh, uh, order the uh, necessary furniture and supplies, uh, get somebody trained. I've also had a conversation Friday uh, from the chief and Kohler. Kohler is interested in joining with the city of Sheboygan in having a joint municipal court. So that's something we'd have to consider as well. Uh, in order to do that, our two ordinances would have to be identical as far as municipal court. So that that might take you know, a couple of meetings to do, uh, to accomplish as well. Uh, so I would suggest start planning start up January 1. If you, oh, I'm sorry. If you keep the municipal court in place. No, thank you. Oh. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess Silas maybe got part of my question. Assuming that it's a go after tonight, Who's going to be responsible for this? Uh, it seemed like we, we did it a year ago and nothing happened and then we got a resolution to rescind it and I just wanted to make sure we had a clear understanding of moving forward 
who was going to put the ad in the paper, or the legal ads for the judge, who was going to put the ads in, who was going to be responsible. Is that your department? Is it the mayor's department? Is it somebody else? I don't know, but I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that would be through the HR department that we'd be talking with that Zurich as far as putting out the uh, uh, announcements for, for those positions. And the mayor will be involved too. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one thing that could save a lot of costs when you're talking about furniture, et cetera, this chamber could be used as the courtroom. We only use it how many days out of a month that they could set this up as one of your circuit courts, a uh, municipal court here. And you wouldn't have to worry about where else the people would need to go. It could be held right here. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I oppose this municipal court right now because of the money issue. A year ago, when the council looked into it, I think they were under the impression that the money was going to be flowing in left and right, and it's not. The money is capped now. And I don't understand the urgency in pushing forward with this municipal court. It could wait a couple of years, and I will not support it. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to thank Rich Gephardt, the finance director, for putting this document together. And I do have a question for him. If it would be all right if he could step up to the uh, Mr. Gephardt, please step, step up to the podium. You're on. Um, I, I know that a lot of times what this, the council does here is give you a project and tell you to um, tell us how to make this work. And that looks like what you've done here. But I'm very interested in your opinion. In your opinion, should the city start a municipal court next year? Well, I guess my opinion would probably be of any new operation at, at this point. As been discussed, I think, previously in tonight's meeting, uh, we recognize we're going to be facing financial difficulties in, in the upcoming years. Uh, there has been limits placed uh, on the council uh, by the state in the future and uh, many different areas that won't be many, as many areas under the control of the council as there have been in the past. And I guess my suggestion, whenever you're looking at new operations that you can control, to try to build in as much stability as you can. Otherwise, you're taking on more risk. And at this point, with what we're facing, uh, we really can't afford more risk. Um, and some of these numbers uh, may not sound huge at 65,000. And I'll be the first one to admit that's just a random estimate based on as much background as I could get on this process. Uh, but as you look through your, your budget book and you see uh, the mayor's summary of the process here that we just went through, at the end of the process, we got the news from the Department of Transportation that they're going to uh, pay the city 90000 less next year for transportation aids in the general fund. And that, uh, you, know, you can relate in there what, what the outcome is of that. Um, we, we don't know what's ahead, but I, I can say that the 90000 looked much bigger this year than in past years. Uh, you know, that right now we don't have as many alternatives to turn to. And we really, as I said, I would really suggest uh, as we go through uh, this difficult situation in the next couple of years that we try to, to keep as much stability as we can. Okay, so that was a no? <laughs> <laughs> That's a no on any change, right? No. As, as, I, as, as you go into any new process where there's risk involved, which I do see this because we don't really know uh, <laughs> what the decreases in the revenues or the what the cash flow situation is going to be and what that impact is going to be. Okay. Thank you. Um, just to, to continue on for well, a second. Um, I do, guess do we need Mr. Gephardt here or not? No, thanks. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Gephardt. Okay. Please, um, con please continue. Thank you. Um, I guess the analogy I, I think of when I look at this situation is that if I went to a car dealer to buy a new car and they told me to come back tomorrow with $30,000 cash and I could have this great car, and I go home and I look in the bank account and I don't have $30,000 and I call my finance director and I call the money man, Rich Gephardt, and I say, I need $30,000 cash tomorrow. And he would say, take your credit card to the bank, get a cash advance and you'll have the cash. And I'll go to the car dealership the next day with my $30,000 and I'll have a new car. The part I forgot to ask is, Mr. Gephardt, is this a good financial choice? And the answer is no. 
because by taking a cash advance on your credit card, you're going to be paying 24% interest. And I think over the years, what we've forgotten to do is ask the man with the money. He knows the budget better than any of us in this room. And if he's not advising us to do this next year, I think we need to roll that into our decision. Because not only did we hear that he doesn't think it's a good idea, at the last meeting we heard that the police said it was a low priority. We heard that the building inspector said that everything's working out fine. We heard the mayor say that he's worried about next year's budget. So I don't see how we should move ahead at this point. To me, it's just, it's not making any sense. I don't see the benefit versus the risk. So I also will not be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Alderman Ratti. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if I may direct another question to Mr. Gephardt. Mr. Gephardt, please, sir. Um, Rich, the question is a nice layout here, but under the salaries, does that just include the judge and the, and the clerks? Is that all you've considered in the salary here? There is a full-time uh, clerk of the courts and a half-time clerk of the courts, as okay. well as the judge. So I guess my question here, Your Honor, is first off, we don't have a home for this court. Assuming we use the common council chambers, as was uh, uh, suggested just a few minutes ago, what type of uh, costs are going to have to go into security in this building to make it more secure? And what type of police overtime or whose budget is the security going to come out of here in the court? Because I don't see any security listed here. Obviously, you're not going to put a clerk and a judge up here and not have a police officer around. How many officers are we going to have to take off the road to make this whole thing happen? How much time is that going to cost us in addition to the officers we have to call in to testify? I mean, there's, there's something I don't see here called security. What's that going to cost us? You'd like it's, me to address that? I really no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Kemmer. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Redke. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. I was going to say something, but I can just see the way the gang is getting together. But uh, we know for a fact this, this municipal court is going to make money. It's, been, it's proven. The committee had a full year study on it. Mr. Gephardt himself in this layout he had tonight. It's going to make some money, but I can see what's happening. So I'm, I'm going to make sure that I support the municipal court. Thank you, Alderman Bird. I think you may have misread the document just handed to us as it compared to the amount of revenue the municipal court is projected to bring the first year to the amount that we get now from the county for doing absolutely nothing. The difference is a $65,000 loss. That's not making money. That's all I wanted to clear. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first, I don't think there's an urgency to have the municipal court. There seems to be an urgency to get rid of it. But this reminds me of when we were looking at the ambulance service and bringing it in-house. And the council was told we're bringing additional revenue. And the, the council at that time was worried about many things, one of them the startup costs, and ultimately they voted down to bring the ambulance service in-house. Well now, Manwalk has proven that the ambulance service brings in lots of money. To me, the decision that council made at that time cost the city a lot of money. The municipal court is a result of thinking outside the box. When businesses lose revenue and can't raise prices, they create new products. The municipal court is our new product. We need to stop raising prices and develop new products. The only mistake that the municipal court committee made, in my eyes, was giving us a report that was too conservative. In the first year, I think it will make a profit. The citizens of Sheboygan are constantly telling us that we need to stop raising taxes, start thinking outside the box, and create more sources of revenue. The municipal court will do just that. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel, thank you for that comment. I will stress, though, so that there is no urgency to get rid of anything. I think you're incorrect in making that assumption. What there is an urgency is to manage our money more wisely. That's where the urgency is. And if you will recall, sir, way back when I first made my appointments, you said, show me, Mayor, that you will work with me and us, and we will work with you. I have showed you that I will work with every one of you. I need you to show me that you're willing to work with me, to trust me this one time, and trust our finance director, trust everybody that's telling us, don't go off on this venture because you're going to lose money. I'd rather tell you a year or two from now, 
I'm sorry I made a mistake, but I think what I'm going to tell you if this thing passes is I told you so. I don't want to do that. I'm asking this council for once that I don't believe that we have shown a, a strong unity as a council in moving forward with our finances. We have a money problem, ladies and gentlemen. I've been trying to stress that to you in all the listening sessions and all the meetings that we've had. I don't know why you don't trust me when I say that. We have a money problem. This is just one more thing that's going to compound that problem. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. And I would also agree with you that we do have to look at our budget respectively, and it's, but it's two sides to a coin. One of the things that I've heard over and over and over is this doom and gloom picture, but we owe the citizens, and I know I'd be looking as one of them, I want to know what suggestions are. It's one thing to hold down the line, but what are you going to do for us? Because we're hearing it over. Shared revenue is going to be frozen or it's going to decrease. My next question is, well, what are we going to do to help ourselves? This is a tool that would help ourselves. It is, yeah, it is a risk, but it could return some financial benefits to the city. Another issue, too, is the ambulance. I guess the difference is you're either looking at the glass half full or half empty. And I'm going to choose to look at Sheboygan half full, and I'm going to con continue to look for re revenue sources and other tools, because if all we do is hold down our budget and that's it, it's just going to continue to get worse. We're going to have to come up with some creative ways, and the municipal court is one of them. Let's not miss this opportunity. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Susha, second time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know that some of the proposed condominium projects have not reached the council floor yet. We had heard some uh, presentations on the, the pay-as-you-go from two condominium projects um, at the last finance meeting. And I know that Alderman Serta is looking for other ways to increase revenue. And when you're talking about each of these condo units putting up 60 to 70 units, that's going to increase the tax base. Those types of expansion projects are going to be increasing the amount of revenue coming into the city. Um, I just don't think that any of the aldermen here have accounting degrees. Um, I don't know if anyone has a finance degree, but I put a lot of eggs in the basket that Rich Gephardt carries. He's the expert when it comes to our money. And if we don't start listening to him too soon, I, I, I don't know where this city is going to be heading. Um, we're taking steps in the right direction by putting more property on the tax rolls, and that is a, a, a reasonable way that we can increase the money coming into the city. And I think that taking risk here is uncalled for. We could take you know, $100,000 from the general fund and buy some lottery tickets if we're willing to take some risks here. And that, I think, would be voted down hands, you know, hands down. We would vote against that because it's just too risky. That's similar to what we're looking at here. There is no guarantee we're going to make the same amount of money. If there was a written guarantee we'd get the same amount of money, if not more, I'd be on board 100%. But since we can't have that guarantee, this risk is not worth taking. Thank you. OK, we'll take a roll call. An I vote means that we will continue with the process of the municipal, of the municipal court. Yes, does everybody understand that? An I vote would be to file these documents and continue with municipal court. And a no, the opposite. I see confused faces. And I vote <laughs> means that we're filing these documents and the municipal court will go on. It'll continue. A nay vote. It's not. Everybody understand? OK. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Groff. No. Ten eyes, five no. Motion passes. Reporter Committee 8 by 1364 by finance authorizing the adoption of the proposed operating plan for Harbor Center Business Improvement District and passing the substitute resolution. Alderman Groff. Yeah, and I would move that the RC be accepted and, and um, filed, or adopted, excuse me, and that the <laughs> substitute of the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Any? Alderman Susha. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will be voting no on this um, for the simple reason of that we are creating a Department of Tourism next year. And to divert uh, $17,000 in room tax to the Business Improvement District no longer makes sense. Last year they had a line item for regional advertising for almost the same amount of money that they were requesting. This year they removed that line item for regional advertising. So they plan on diverting that someplace else into the Business Improvement District and I think that's totally inappropriate. The object of room tax is to market this community to the people in Milwaukee and Chicago and get them here. Once they're here, then the bid district can use their own money to generate interest to pull them downtown. But if we keep diverting the room tax away from the Department of Tourism, we will never have enough money to do the advertising that is necessary. I mean, some of these magazines, to just put one ad in, it's going to be $10,000 per ad. And we can't keep diverting money. So now that we have a Department of Tourism, I feel that it's very inappropriate that we give this extra money, the 17000 in room tax, to the bid district. Therefore, I will be voting no. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to ask Paulette Enders um, if she feels that this is a duplication of services. Ms. Enders, would you please step up to the podium? Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Again, as I mentioned at the finance meeting, I don't feel that this is a duplication of services. Um, we'll have, we can look at the year 2006. In the past, Dick Meyer and I in the bid have worked, I'm a ex officio on the bid board. We've worked closely on the small amount of advertising that the city's undertaken and made sure that um, there's no duplication of services. They also man the tourist information booth all summer long. And I feel that that's uh, very beneficial to the city and the tourists that visit the city. And um, I think Dick Meyer at the finance committee meeting had made a promise to not duplicate any services, you know, and I, I believe in what he's stating, and I would support that. Please hold on, wait a minute. Alderman Stephan, do you have a question for? Uh... Uh, no, just a statement. I guess I, I was going to ask Paulette. Um... Alder person Shusha spoke so eloquently on the last issue about you know trusting our experts, and I guess I would hope that she trusts our expert on this one also. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Mr. Anders. Okay, Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, and just to uh, to add to what Paulette had said, um, the seventeen thousand dollars that um, the bid is going to be using is is made up from room tax money, and it is being used to help during January, February, March, April before we. We really get our feet wet as far as the, our tourism department, and uh, to help the the new manager or director or whatever um, the, the title happens to be, uh, help him or her um, do what is needed to help us advertise the city. Thank you, Alderman McGraw. Okay, we will call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Meyer. No. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Baldwin? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 no. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced. 1365 lies over. 1366 to 1367 to be referred. Matters laid over, 1237-RO number 2870506 by the City Plan Commission recommending repealing and recreating section 15.9343B of the City of Sheboygan Zoning Code relating to quorum requirements for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and pass the ordinance. There's a motion and a second to accept and file and pass it, the ordinance. Under discussion, there being none, please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bowman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 15 minutes. Motion carries. 1263 in RO. No, RO number 2890506 by the city clerk submitting an application for a private well permit for James Bergschultz. Who takes that? 
Alderman, City's application for private well, Alderman Bauman. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution tonight be put upon its passage. There's, there's a motion and second I roll, I to accept and file on, under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1249, resolution number 1320506 by Alderman Groff, Stefan Montemayor, Susha, and Davis authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There, is there a second? Second. Motion to second, under discussion? Under discussion, Your Honor. Um, this represents uh, the estimated revenue and appropriations for donations received from uh, Henry Young for the sculpture pur purchase, the, the one in the rotary. And um, this will be a, a, a project that he will be working on along with uh, Christopher Graff. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Ben Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. 1259, General Ordinance Number 370506 by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Montemayor, Ratke, and Meyer relating to no standing, stopping, or parking areas so as to add the north side of Oakland Avenue from a point of 50 feet west of South 11th Street. The no parking restriction for the entire block north side of the 1100 block of Oakland Avenue remains. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There be a non. Would you please call the roll? Sagali, Stefan, Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Aye. and Radke. Aye. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. 1368 will go to public protection and safety. 1369 will go to public protection and safety. 1370, an RO by the Board of Contractors Examiner submitting applications for building contractor's license. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Alderman Ratke. I make a motion that we accept uh, the document. Uh, oh, yeah, right there. What are we on here? Accept and file 1370. I make motion we accept and file the document. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion. There be a non. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1371 will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. 1372, an RO by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners recommending filing <laughs> various documents. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of officer be accepted and filed. There's a motion and a second to accept and file 1372 under discussion. Alderman Sadla. Thank you, Your Honor. Under 1372, one of the communications that went to the committee was one from one of my constituents, Mr. Bolgart, who had inquired if indeed the Parks and Forestry Commission would be willing to explore the idea of pursuing High Avenue as a dog run. And I'm happy to report that um, they are going to be looking into that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Deberg. I just want to get two cents worth in about I have no. That is my district, and those people are having a big problem right down there with just dogs without a dog run down there. So I will not support that area. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Any more? All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1372. Three, a resolution by Alderman Montemayor establishing a help and water feature advisory committee for the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Yes, thank you. Um, we've talked a lot about the water feature. Should we start it? Should we fix it? Shall we fill it in? Shall we just leave it the way it is? So I think it's a good idea to have a committee formed to just look at this one thing, and that's all they have to think about. 
and, and worry about, and then give us some recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess what I'm thinking here is here if we have another advisory committee. I, th I think the council can be best decide that to not have this go to a committee who's going to have, um, as I um, understand Alderman Berg said, different, seven different opinions. They're all going to come back. Nobody knows what to do. We've got a council here that can decide what to do with this. And I think we're going to be committed to death on here. I remember um, that we let go of the Ergo Commission because we didn't want to have so many committees. Well, all of a sudden now we're having committee for this and a committee for that, and I don't think it's necessary for a water feature. Thank you. Alderman Vander Willey. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Segal that we're having a lot of committees, but I'm going to go along with this one, except last time, I don't remember, maybe a year or two ago, we had a committee with a bunch of, of citizen members, no aldermen. I felt like there was a lack of guidance. So I'm going to make a, an amendment, a motion to amend the, uh, the resolution after the last, be it further resolved, it states that the membership of the community shall consist, consist of seven members, then I'll amend it to say one alderman, who are residents of the city of Sheboygan and shall be appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the common council. There's a motion to amend. There's a second? Second. And a second. Any discussion on the amendment? I'll keep, I'll keep you on there, Alderman Berg, for the next one. Any discussion on the amendment? I think that the only reason, from my standpoint, that an alderman wasn't put on there was that uh, it would give the community an opportunity to provide input on their own as opposed to throwing in the element of an elected official. I don't have a problem with it. If that's what the council wants, that, that's fine. Um, either way works. Uh, but I will tell the council that I've had a tremendous amount of response from people who who want to participate. They want to help out. Okay, we'll take a uh, roll call on the vote on Al the amendment. Right, Alderman Vanderweeld is the one person as an alderman included in the seven, so it would be six residents and one alderman, or are you at looking to increase it to eight people? Alderman Vanderweeld. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I meant six, six and citizens one. and one alderman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is to amend six and one. Uh, Alderman Stefan. Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. And Sigali? 11 ayes and 4 noes on the Motion amendment. Motion carries. Now we'll take a vote on the um, uh, resolution as amended. Alderman D. Berg, you had a comment on that one, sir? Right. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, that, that's the job of the, this council, to make decisions. And like I said, every time there's an issue that comes up, we can't keep on appointing committees to study this, study that. We have a planning director. We have a Department of Public Works director. They, they should get together, and if there is an uh, interested party in the city that's willing to pick up the tab for the water feature, I think they should get together with them and then come to the council with uh, whatever findings that they have. Thank you, Alderman Byrne. Alderman Groff? Thank you, Your Honor. I was just going to make a motion as amended that the resolution should be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. The resolution as amended be put upon its passage. Next, we have Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. And yes, we as a council will be making the decision. We need more information. We need input. We're just getting more info, and that can't be wrong. Thank you. Alderman Eberg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I will be in support of this. I think it's a good start. And I think uh, rather than being a finite committee, I think uh, we should look at capitalizing, if you would, on the enthusiasm of people in our community to support many things. Uh, we have 
uh, individuals who probably don't know they can memorialize people by having a brick in a walkway. We have individuals who, more, who are more than willing, the Friends of Sheridan Park, to rehab and bring things forward for parks. Other uh, municipal entities, for example, the Sheboygan School District has, has formed a foundation uh, to be freestanding from government, yet, but yet to solicit uh, decisions. We had a brief talk about a dog park. Uh, Connie Shocktel is very interested in developing a dog park and would be more than willing. So if, if, if somebody wanted to name a dog park after, some, after an individual, and uh, basically have some level of perpetual care that could take it off of the tax roll, I could see that as being a very good start. So, I, and again, I see this as being in that line of looking at those opportunities where individuals can participate and we can deal with the amenities and the quality of life kinds of issues, because you're right about the budget. The things that are going to go and be most effective are the quality of life kinds of issues. And the water feature, I think, for me is basically uh, a watershed, if you would, uh, um, uh, identity of what quality of life is in the, in the battles we do. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Byrd. Alderman Settler. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, I, I look at this and I, I'm wondering if we're losing sight of what our positions are. Because the last time I checked, I thought that's what I was here for, for citizen input, where my constituency could call me. Now, if a committee wants to do all my homework and that's the way that we're going, that's what I was supposed to be doing. I'm picking up the phone. I'm asking the questions. Because I think we're now narrowing it down to a very select few of seven that you choose when people could still call me from my district and give me their input and I'm still doing the homework. But if this is the pattern that we want to set, I don't know if it's such a good idea. So I'm giving an explanation why I'm not going to support it. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. And I am going to support this for the simple reason being I hear from many people, what are you people going to do with the water feature? And it, it, it's, I was driving my moped downtown one day and I stopped to thank a few ladies earlier this summer for planting flowers out here and, and told them they were doing a nice job and I'd like to see the community spirit. And Alderman E. Berg was correct. I mean, people do have, want to memorialize somebody someplace. We can look at those alternatives. But the big thing is, we're getting people involved in their government in, in a way that, you know, we can take a look at making something better in the city. Uh, we can't make all those decisions by ourselves because we don't have all the ideas. You've got to get ideas from outside of, the, of, of these chambers. And that's where the citizen input is needed. I mean, if we start saying we don't want to listen to citizens, then we might as well just unlist our phone numbers and call it quits. Thank you. Alderman Seva, one more time. Yep. Last time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just as a reminder for the citizens, where they want to give their input is when it's referred to a committee and they're entitled to come and speak. Absolutely. Exactly. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. We will take the roll call on the motion as amended. Resolution as Resolution amended. Resolution as amended. Yes. Alderman Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bautman. Aye. D. Berg. No. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. No. Davis. No. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. 10 ayes, 5 noes. Motion carries. 1375 will go to City Plan Commission. 1376, a resolution by Alderman Bauman and Kittleson directing a public hearing to be held in connection with a change in the zoning for the corner vacant lot on North 37th Street and Erie Avenue. I'd ask for a motion to pass the resolution. Uh, Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage, please. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. A second. With the resolution it's upon its passage under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1337 will go to City Plan Commission. 1378, a resolution by Alderman Bauman and Kittleson directing a public hearing to be held in connection with the establishment of a zoning classification for property located at Indiana Avenue, 500 feet east of Taylor Drive, Lot 1. Alderman Bauman. Again, I thank you, Your Honor. I move that this resolution be put upon its passage, please. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1379 will go to City Plan Commission. 1380 to City Plan Commission. 
1381, a resolution by Alderman Bauman Kittleson directing a public hearing to be held in connection with the establishment of a zoning classification for property located at Indiana Avenue, 500 feet east of Taylor Drive, Lot 2. And you get to do it one more time, Alderman Bauman. Again, I thank you. And I move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, there being none, all those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1382 City Plan Commission, 1383 will go to finance and before we make a motion to adjourn, every uh, make sure that the ch chairpersons of the uh, standing committees meet uh, with their committee on, on the budget as recommended and that you report back to, uh, to the council. There's a motion to adjourn. A second, all those in favor state aye. I'm sorry, I'm so excuse, excuse me, hold on before we take the vote. All of them, Sarah. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick question from earlier, and this was stated at a past council, and I know I'm going to get calls on this. Could Alderman Meyer or Alderman Groff clarify what bill that is currently in the Wisconsin um, legislature that you're referring to for the municipal court? We can uh, get that answer. You can get that answer to her. Do you need that tonight, or do you want the Alderman Groff? There isn't. Um, it's just being introduced. It's being talked about in committee. There's no bill number assigned to it. Thank you, Mulgrave. All those in favor, adjourn. We stand adjourned.